All right, welcome back. So in this video, what we want to do is talk about welds, the types of welds, the art of welding. Ryan, that's probably what you'd say probably one of your big strengths is, is being a welder. What did you, where'd you get your experience? How did you learn how to weld? I started out, uh, I did weld in community college for two years, uh, born out of, I wanted to have the tools, resources, and skills to make my own stuff. Okay, so educate us on what are the types of weld, welders, welding, like. I know there's differences in you know the different ways you can put metal together, but sure, and that's even evolving. Uh, primarily, you've got a, a TIG machine here, which is tungsten inert gas. Uh, you have a, a some type of a foot pedal or finger control controlling amperage. You've got a torch with an electric arc providing heat and a filler rod, so you're coordinating three uh, appendages all at once to to make a weld. Um, you can also have uh, MIG welding, which is an uh, acronym for metal inert gas, or maybe commonly referred to as wire feed welder. Okay. Um, that's a perfectly approvable method. Not approved would be a flux core welder, which doesn't have the argon component, uh, shielding gas, also uh, oxy fuel or torch welding is not approved. Okay, so in most of our rally cars, it's either one of the, one, this or that. Yes, um, correct. What do you see the most common? What do you guys use at TRF? TRF, um, we use TIG exclusively for our tube-to-tube -tube connections. Um, although I do believe that a, the, the welder and the quality and talent of the welder is the, the greatest common factor. You can absolutely have good results with a MIG. You can have good results with TIG. You can also have bad results with either or. It's all come down to the person behind the, yes. the stick. I do find value in formerly trained welders or experienced welders. Uh, there's, there's knowledge that comes along with that and experience. And uh, we've even done some testing that one commonly held, I believe, misconception is that if a MIG weld looks good, it probably is good. Um, and I think we can share some, some photos and some videos of, of testing we've done and can prove that you can, you can have dissatisfactory results with a MIG and certainly with a TIG. Uh, we're not the only ones who know how to weld well, but uh, the welder is definitely a factor. Okay. Um, one thing that we talk a lot about and I've heard a lot about is a roll cage looks really good, um, but people have a hard time getting the top of the bars. Yep. And, and so talk us through a little bit of how, how do you get the welds all the way around the tube and what are the things that you look for? Um, a lot of that's just experience and practice. Uh, we do have some tricks, uh, possibly the order of operations. We may build certain components of roll cage, which allow us to still manipulate, bend, or move pieces around. Sometimes we're cutting access panels. Every chassis can be a little bit different, mm -hmm. um, but that certainly is a challenge. And um, equipment can have a difference, smaller torches, flexible torches, different MIG guns. Uh, I think that's one of the things you'll see different in a professional builder. Uh, versus uh, home built is the knowledge base to utilize all those resources available. So we have a few other videos that we put together and we talked about like the nodes and where the strength is and the welds are what put everything together and that is what is the strength of that component of the cage, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the glue that holds it all together. And that glue, the welds, it's something if you're an experienced welder or a little bit less experienced welder, um, that is going to dictate the success of that the component. Absolutely. I personally, I believe that the welder is the biggest and primary component to that. Equipment has something to do with it. There's, there's better and worse welders and the machine uh, has an impact. You have some newer TIG machines have pulse capacity, um, the older machines won't. Uh, but really having someone who's experienced and knowledgeable and understands the metallurgy of what they're doing, the process of what they're doing will really help to uh, benefit a better outcome. Something that we've talked a lot about is the, the theory of the, the right to build a roll cage at home or a lot of people who do build a roll cage at home. Where is your, where your stance on that? How do you feel about you know, people who do build their home, own cage and where, where should you get professional help and when do you think you have enough experience at home? Well, of course, as a professional, I love it when, when, when people choose professionals. It's you're, you're, you're relying on your life and your well-being. So if you're not comfortable and competent, you really should pass this job along to someone who's uh, experienced and qualified. However, obviously, I started somewhere. I mean, everybody has to build a first cage, and you can have the understanding. Um, it may also relate to your risk and reward threshold. How much do you want to rely on that roll cage and if you're comfortable welding it then the concepts are not intrinsically complicated but the process and the experience are of value. Okay. So 
you're open and understand the theory that people need to get a start somewhere. But you know, if, if you're in this dangerous sport or in a more dangerous sport, uh, you have to, you know, ebbs and flows and balance yes. that risk profile. Absolutely. Sure. Um, I think you do get a better product with a professional uh, just based on experience and knowledge and, and practice. However, maybe that doesn't suit your budget, suit your time or uh, myself. I started as a, that, that was my, the core foundation why I got into motorsports was I wanted to build my own cool stuff. And I certainly can appreciate that there's just some gratification doing that and people may well take that risk on and, and good for them. Just know the, the, the risk and reward that you're getting out of your own product. So you also provide uh, log books for any ARA rally car. Uh, if someone brings a car that they built at home or from some other shop, what do you look for? What's a good weld? What's a bad weld? Generally speaking, that is just an experience thing. Uh, most of the time, a good weld uh, is a good looking weld. Um, I do myself in my shop, we do our own testing in house and that's part of how we elevate our product and we make sure we're doing the best job that we can. If there's a new material or a new filler rod or a new process, we do actually test it, hmm. um, which I'm not sure uh, a lot of people are doing, but we want to be sure we're putting out the best product. But generally speaking, if you've home built a cage, you're, you're taking on that risk uh, and welcome to do so. Sure. So if you were to be buying a used rally car right now or looking at a car like is there any tips or tricks you could provide the people? And I know we have some clips of some good looking welds and bad looking welds. Like, is there anything else that you can provide for advice when looking at? I hope that's what this whole video series is doing is helping educate people to see the differences and the nuances of here's, here's a higher quality and here's a lower quality and here's things that might benefit you, might not benefit you. Uh, and it can go through construction and weld quality and, and materials. So it's a holistic view. So this whole, what the kind of the idea of this whole series. Yeah, I want to help educate people to know what to look for and what will be a benefit and what the pros and cons are. All right, so Ryan, one of the other things that uh, I know about is gusseting. So what is gusseting? When do you use it? Uh, what's the theory of that? Gusseting is a way to add strength to a connection or a joint without a tremendous amount of weight. It's adding weld engagement. It's adding sectional strength. It's sometimes we're using because they're mandated. There's certain parts of the door bars, uh, X structures that usually require a gusset, but there's also cases where we're adding additional gussets just because of strength of adding rigidity to the cage or safety for the occupant. And that's just an entire welded in section across a, a longer section of tube. That's yep. one of the longer pieces of I see in a roll cage design that is a, a long weld, right? Yes, uh, you can have a gusset at the A pillars, uh, that's fairly common uh, from some constructors adding the connection point to the chassis. Uh, that's something well, TRF will do a lot of is we'll add gussets or plates to add points of connection. Anywhere you can connect the roll cage to the body is a, a tremendous benefit of overall strength. Interesting. Well, again, we appreciate all your experience and knowledge in this and you know, it's, it is your background. So uh, we, we definitely, I've learned a lot from you. Um, if you guys have a lot, any other questions or concerns, please add them in, in the comments. Ryan, if they want to get a hold of you or get a roll cage built, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Uh, Ryan at leonawcars.com. All right, so send him an email there. Uh, we'll put his email in the notes as well. So look forward to hearing from you guys and look, join us for our next video. Thank you.